Hello everybody. Welcome back to some Fallout 4. No, nope, hang on. One second. And... Ugh. There we go. Now my headphones are plugged in. <laughs> I'm sure you could hear it, but I had zero audio at that point. Alright. Uh, so picking up where we left off, we're going to go talk to Piper, and then we're going to head over to... Uh, the Valentine Detective Agency, and then I think the only place that we didn't look into... Oh yeah, and then we got to go to the uh, the bar, the dugout, uh, to pick up that quest now that we can finally get it. And then I think after that, the only place that we didn't check out was the mayor's office there. So we'll quickly pop up there. We'll only be able to talk to his secretary, I believe, but... Uh, yeah. So anyway, first things first, though. Piper wanted us to have an interview, so... Piper. Glad you dropped by. You holding up, Luke? Why are you calling me that? Because you're a vault dweller. I know you're not wearing a blue jumpsuit right now, but the Pip-Boy and the fish-out-of-water look... Dead giveaways. So here's the deal. I want an interview. Your life story in print. I think it's time Diamond City had a little outside perspective on the Commonwealth. You do that? And, uh, I'll tell you what, I'll come with you, watch your back while you get used to the world above ground. All right, Piper, I'm in. Good. Let's get down to business. So, I know you're from a vault. How would you describe your time on the inside? Cold. My family and I were frozen. I didn't spend much time in the vault. W wait, <laughs> They boxed you up in a fridge? The whole time? Are you saying you were alive before the war? Yes. I'm over 200 years old. Oh my god. The man out of time. So, you've seen the Commonwealth, Diamond City. How does it compare to your old life? Mm. Honestly, seeing everyone surviving out here, rebuilding the world, it gives me hope. That's surprisingly inspired, Blue. We're definitely quoting that. Now, the big question. You came all this way looking for someone. Who is it? My son, Sean, was kidnapped. He's not even a year old. The parent after the missing child. <laughs> as heartbreaking today as it ever was. Tell me, do you suspect the Institute's involved? I don't know. No one ever does. That's what makes them so scary. For the last part of our interview, I'd like to do something different. I want you to make a statement to Diamond City directly. The threat of kidnapping is all but ignored in the Commonwealth. Everyone wants to pretend it just doesn't happen. What would you say to someone out there who's lost a loved one but might be too scared or too numb to the world to look for them? No matter how much you want to give up, don't. You have to have hope that you'll see them again. Or at least, that you'll know the truth. A strong note to end on, Blue. Thanks. That's everything. It's going to take some time to put this all together, but I think your story is going to give Diamond City plenty to talk about. Anyway, I agreed to come with you, right? Watch your back. Just say the word when you're ready. I can't wait to see where this story goes next. All right. Hey, Piper. Heading my way? Well, no, hopefully you're heading fine. Sure, let's go. Will do. All right. So now we have Piper. We can start building up our rep with her. Uh, Piper is a weird one for me. Well, Piper and Nick both are weird ones for me. Companion-wise. Because, like, obviously I like to keep all my companions together at Sanctuary. But because of the way the game works, obviously. Like, if we move Piper to Sanctuary, her little sister here, Nat, obviously stays here. And, uh... Well, I mean, she obviously runs it well enough but it's just weird that her sister moves away and doesn't bring her little sister with her doesn't because you know unless you get piper and go back to visit i mean you could always like pretend that you know when you're not there she comes back and visits 
Um, but I think that's a little weird. So Piper, I, I flip flop between it. Sometimes I keep her a sanctuary. Other times I just dismiss her and then she comes back here. It's big, and loud, full of corrupt officials and brown nosing citizens, but it's home. Uh, and I do the same thing with Nick. I flip flop between him because Nick, while no family I to speak of, um, Piper's kind of a troublemaker. Sounds like the perfect friend for me then. But, uh, what is this? Raiders and Andrew Station? Fuck. Open no stay one with a gun and some ambition. Raider activity is on the rise near Andrew Station. <laughs> they have money, gear, supplies, everything stolen from honest, hardworking people. Keep what you kill, no other reward given. Alright, I'll take that. I have never noticed that board before. Is that like so restock or something? Um, but anyway, yeah, so like Nick, once we get him, because we won't get him right away. Um, obviously he has the detective agency here. Now, he does have a secretary. Told you your luck wouldn't last forever. Alright, actually, come to think of it, what is the name of this quest then? Because it's the main quest to look common one. His top. Something wrong? Another stray coming in from the rain. Afraid you're too late. Office is closed. I know you must be busy, but I won't take much of your time, miss. It's important. You're right. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to be rude, but it's just... The detective... He's gone missing. Nikki's missing? What has he gotten himself into this time? Do you have any idea how I could find him? He disappeared working a case. The Skinny Malone's gang had kidnapped a young woman, and he tracked them down to their hideout in Park Street Station. There's an old vault down there they use as a base. I told Nick he was walking into a trap, but he just smiled and walked out the door like he always does. Who's this Skinny Malone character? I don't know much about him, but he's from Good Neighbor, and that means he's in the well-pressed suits and machine gun school of thuggery. I'll find him. You have my word. Thank you. Nick should be easy to spot. He's always wearing that old hat and trench coat getup. Please, hurry. Alright. So that, like I said, is to advance the main quest line. Once we go get Nick, then a bunch of other stuff happens, yada yada yada. But, uh, until we max out Piper's... Because uh, I figure, because Piper and Nick are both part of the main storyline... I figured we'd stick with Piper for now, do some odd jobs around, you know, run around, do stuff like we have been doing, and uh, I don't remember where the dugout is. And then uh, once we have her companion perk, uh, then we'll continue the main game for a bit to get Nick, because then we can. Uh, what? Diamond City's got yeah. two private. Because uh, then we can get Nick, and then we can work on his. Uh, so I, that's my current plan. We'll see how it goes. But yeah, anyway. Oh, well, here we go. Try it, Yippee. All right, you. Tell me. Diamond City Radio is terrible, yes? It makes you want to cut your own ears off. I don't think I noticed. You listen to it. It grates on ears like sandpaper. This DJ Travis... He is disaster. Something must be done, and soon. We will have customers suiciding before long. Vadim. It's true. Don't listen to my brother. Someone needs to get rid of him. We need a new DJ for the radio. I don't think many would notice if he, you know, disappeared. That's a horrible idea. I tell you, it would be easier than you think. You just have to talk to... Uh, you just have to talk him into following you out of town. Honestly, oh, right. Vadim, That's what enough. the hell has gotten into you? Vadim isn't serious. He doesn't really want to kill Travis. Okay, what's really going on here? <laughs> Sorry, we were just <laughs> joking around a bit. <laughs> Only jokes. Travis is a good friend. 
Yet him and I worry about him. Well, Travis, he, he means well, but he does not have the confidence he needs for that job or anything else, really. And so he's always awkward. He does not believe in himself, you see? He expects he will fail at everything, and so he does. Well, something like that could be tough to change. No, it's easy to fix. I tell Yefim over and over, go on, spoil sport, go back to working. We will figure out how to help Travis. Come, you, meet me in back room, we discuss plan. Fucking love Russians in games. I say in games because I Deep never walk. met a Russian in real life, yeah, but, but I ain't buying it. like the way they talk and everything, it's just fuck. <laughs> oh, hello again. I can take. No, Scarl, I do believe you're part of this customers. quest. <laughs> Most die. Uh, you let me know if you need a drink. Um, I'm supposed to be following you to do. <laughs> Like, really? What do you want, Vadim? I am glad you are willing to help. Unlike my deadbeat brother! Travis is a good guy. He deserves better life. I'm just waiting to hear your idea. Travis needs boost of confidence. You know what does that for him? Winning a bar fight. I'm sure you've been in one, yes? I'm not some thug. I don't get involved in stuff like that. Real quick way to make a lot of enemies. Ugh. What if it was for good cause? Then would you be willing? I want to stage fight here in Dugga. Nothing too serious. Uh, we make sure Travis wins and feels good about himself after. I want you to be there to help make it look real. What do you think? Sound good to you? Gonna need some more information. Okay, I have this all thought out. I have contacts, people I can count on. Real tough looking, but they will take a die for money. They confront Travis here at Dugga. You step in and teach him who she needs to stand up to them. Then you and Travis take them down. Nothing gets too rough, and Travis is something he can feel good about. Simple. Right? Why involve me in this? You have seen Travis, yes? <laughs> he cannot fight alone. Not even fake one. He needs help. You can help him. I have everything ready by six o'clock. Travis should be here by then. You show up and it will go well. Promise. All right. Uh, it is currently nine in the morning so we've got some time to waste uh so let's go check out i was just gonna sit and wait but you know what since we do have some time to waste uh let's go quickly check out the uh i can't remember what it's called the mayor but the mayor's office whatever you're gonna ask i don't know anything about there it is yeah i'm not gonna ask you anything Yeah, if we go up here, that... all right. And then I guess I should probably check to see because I haven't really. Because I don't really remember if there's anything. Like, I know that there's the, um. The unique weapons in that. But that's interesting. Don't actually know where that elevator goes to. But. Mayor's in no mood to talk about any of this synth nonsense. Unless you're looking for a housing permit, I can't help you. Well, let's hear about the permit. We have one home available. It's in the center of town, right near the market. You can do whatever you like with the interior, and all the tools you need to make your own furnishings are provided at no extra charge. 2,000 caps. I'll take it. Here's the key. Let me be the first to welcome you as a resident of the Great Green Jewel. All right. Hey, Geneva. Enjoy your new home. Okay, that's it. Uh, but yeah, that's 
So that's how you get the house. The mayor is here. This is his office. He's got a bedroom with a bunch of junk in it. Although I would love to have this lion statue. Uh, I'm assuming this is maybe his office or where Geneva lives. I don't know. Fuck if I know what that is, because his office office is clearly out here. Enjoy your stay in Diamond City. Now, excuse me. Mayor McDonough? I'd love to talk, but I have matters to attend to. Hmm. Kind of want to hack into his computer to see what's there, but I'm not entirely sure when he leaves. But actually, come to think of it, if I do this, right? Mayor McDonough. Excuse me, but I'm very busy right now. Oh, I was really hoping that he would turn more. Ah, well. All right. No funny business around the mayor. Got it? Got it. Fiber. No? I feel like you wouldn't be too happy with me bringing Piper up there. Uh, but yeah, so we got... A couple of magazines. That we'll go and grab, and then that'll be it, and then we'll just wait until 6 o'clock. Um, okay. Yeah. Excuse me. We actually passed by both of these magazines before, but I forgot that, uh, that they were even here. Is Mayor McDonough telling the truth? What does he have to hide? Okay, so, first things first. Uh, we'll head to the schoolhouse, because this is where the one is. Now, thankfully, these things aren't marked as, uh, owned by anyone. Um. Nice hat. Thanks. Oh, look, they have a kitty kitty. Kitty kitty kitty. Anyway. So, nice. here's an episode, or an issue of Live and Love Robot Companions per permanently inflict 5% damage. I I bought something to peruse myself. With the uh, Automaton DLC, that magazine becomes significantly more important since before that, you had Codsworth and Curie, and... I'm not entirely sure if version 2 of Curie still counts as a robot or not. I mean, technically is, but I don't... But anyway, and then in here is a Robco yes. Fun, which includes the Zeta Invaders Holotape game, which has actually been a while since we got the, got the game. Uh, but other than that, there's... I'll go through the list of stuff that you can get, or at least that's on the wiki, just so that you you know, um, there's nine Nuka Cola Quantums, eight Nuka Cherries, three of the Join the Railroad holotapes. So we've already got one of those, and they're all the same. Uh, there's if you break into oh, in the oh, no they're actually the league, oh, whoops, a uh, where that. There is actually a different hollow tape that we can get. Everyone who's anyone reads public occurrences. Because it's the only newspaper there is to read. But anyway. Hey, no shame in taking these days, Nick. Solomon can hook oh. you up. Yeah, that's fine. I don't take counts. Although Rad X, I think, counts as a cam. Why? Hello. Uh so lovely to see more young people up here in the stands. Ah, there it is. We're also, well, old. <laughs> You're you in look the like a man who could use another action. drink. Not today. Gotcha. So yeah, that's uh, a holotape. Now you might be wondering, how Don't can you down. steal it? Well, have a drink. you do this. Come on, Piper. Excuse me. No. <laughs> you just walked right up into the stands, didn't you? Uh, I like your stone. Let's see. Where is a good? There isn't really anywhere in here, though. 
You here for a uh, beer or uh, maybe something a little stronger? I don't know who's currently detecting me. But yeah, if you ever have anything that you need that you would like to steal, but it's like out in the open even like a little bit. Um just pick it up with like the command there. And then you can move it around. Now thankfully Piper doesn't mind theft. So this all tip contains encoded subroutines for the brewing of Gwinnett brand dead red coat ale. Attempting to use these brewing subroutines without licensing agreement is considered theft of corporate secrets and will be prosecuted to the fullest extent of the law. If found, please return to your local Gwinnett brewery for a cash reward. That's it. That's the whole thing. Uh, but it is a unique take. You should so. meet my grandson. Oh, not that he would ever come up here. No. Um, okay, so then other than that, we got the magazine. We got the, the two magazines. Uh, if you break into Arturo's house, he has a mini nuke in there that you can take. And then there's obviously all the unique weapons. Arturo still sells the big boy, which is the fat man. Old Faithful, which is the laser pistol. He also sells the protector's armor. Uh, the baseball bat guy sells the Rockdale Slugger. Becky, the general store merchant there, has the champion chest piece and red arm. Uh, if you need a hazmat suit, she can also sell that. Because uh, I don't think that the clothing store there sells it. Hey, you there. I um, I have a question for you. Go okay, ahead. I'm listening. You were in the tap house before, and... Oh. You and the bartender got in a fight. Nice of you to call it a fight, but we both know what really happened. Cook kicked my ass. Oh, I was I'm looking for you. I'm I don't know he's sleeping with my wife. Until he decides he's bored with her and she comes crawling back home to me. So, where do I come in? I'm going to go back and talk to him, and I want you to come with me. You saw? You won't take me seriously otherwise. I don't want to have to really hurt him. I just want him to leave Darcy alone. Okay. I'll help you. Okay. Good. Good. I'm sure Cook will back down once he sees you're with me. Mm -hmm. This will work better if I talk to Cook by myself. You're probably right. I am so angry at Cook, I might lose control. Just get him to leave Darcy alone. Also, I, um... How far do you want me to go? As far as you need to. I don't want him dead, but otherwise, he deserves to suffer for what he's done. Okay, so actually, I kind of screwed up. The hazmat suit, I said I don't think is so fun, but that is the woman who sells it. Uh, the general store has the... Wastelanders chess piece that uh, you can buy from them. Let's see, I need to be there at six. It is. Uh, what the time on this? There it is. Twelve thirty. So I still got some time. Don't let my husband drag you into any of his nonsense. No, oh, well. I mean, I do plan to. Hip boy? Might give my left arm for one of those. Well, you'll have to cut off mine to get it. Ah, oh, fuck me. How do I always... I hate the stand. I'll meet you there, then. Don't be late. Yeah, yeah, I'll be there. I just have to close up. We need to talk, Cook. Oh, yeah? Is there some kind of problem? Are you sleeping with Paul Pembroke's wife? I really don't see what business it is of yours who I'm sleeping with. Paul asked me to talk to you, so here I am, asking nicely. And I'm asking you, nicely, to turn back around and go tell Paul to come talk to me himself, if he's man enough. Last chance. Are you going to stay away from Darcy or not? Maybe I'll 
ultimatums aren't the way we should be. Take it easy. We can talk this through. This whole thing with Darcy and me. Bad idea. I admit it. Not like I planned it or anything. She was just always hanging around here. You know how it is. Look, tell Paul it's over. I swear. I won't even let her in my bar anymore. Is that good enough for you? That's a good start. Something more concrete would help. Yeah, okay. I get it. I have an idea. Something I've been thinking about for a while already. Kill two birds with one stone, you know? Let's hear it. Here's the deal. I have some other um, businesses on the side. One of them is helping Nelson Latimer spend his dad's money to make himself feel like a gangster. Get to the point. I'm getting to it. Me and Nelson are supposed to be meeting some gentlemen from Good Neighbor to exchange Nelson's cash for their chems. My plan is simple. We take the money and the chems. I don't know. An awful lot of unknowns. Trust me, we can do this, no problem. The meeting's always in the same place. They always bring the same number of guys. They'll never know what hit them. I'm in. Let's do this. Now you're talking. I promise you won't regret it. In a few hours, we're both going to be sitting pretty. All right, so there is actually one thing I would like to do, because that's going in. Fine. Uh, because I actually do want to bring Paul here because it's actually I had forgot a little bit about that. Uh, uh this is Paul, right? Hey, Paul. As recommended by me, myself, and I. Solomon, shut up. No, he's not going to talk to me. Hang on. Uh, before. Okay, this should be just after I took the thing, so we should be able to go and get him. Because like I said, it is a much more interesting interaction if you if you just back fall up instead of going yourself. Hey, you there. I am. Um... Go ahead. I'm listening. You were in the tap. Okay, we did do all this. You and the bartender. Nice of you to call it a fight. I'm supposed to pretend I don't know until he decides he's cool. So where do I come? I'm going to go back and talk. You saw? Okay. Okay. I'll help you. Okay. Good. Good. I'm sure Cook will back down once he sees you're with me. Let's go. You do the talking. I'll be the intimidating presence. All right. Come on. What? Okay. There is a message. Oh. Excuse me, Probably resident. Nothing. Some guy came into town. Said he picked up a weird distress call in the Cambridge ruins. Cambridge the super ruins. salon can give you the hairstyle of your Cambridge dreams. Ruins. Could that? Uh, I wonder. That's probably um, the Brotherhood guys, right? I mean, they had a distress distress oh, call in there. There. Where are you going? Nowhere you need to worry about. Whatever. I'll see you at home. All right. Want to do something fun? Run the bases. Trust me. It is an achievement if you do that. Not that, you know, they would know about that in this. You know, it's not Borderlands. There isn't, as far as I'm aware, there isn't any, like, fourth wall breaks in, in this game. At least none that I'm aware of. Um, that's weird, but whatever. I'll meet you there then. Don't be late. Yeah, yeah, I'll be there. I just have to close up. We need to talk. Jesus, Paul, what now? It's time for you to shut up and listen, Cook. What the hell is this? And what are you doing here? Don't tell me he's hired you to help lean on me. Paul just asked me to come with him. Is that how it is? Okay. Well, I'm listening, Paul. 
What do you have to say this time? Just this. You leave Darcy alone, starting now, or else. Now that is a very bad idea. You don't want to pull a gun on me unless you intend to use it. But you think I won't use it? Huh? Do I just need to kill you? Is that what you're saying? Put the guns away before this gets out of hand. That's right. We can solve this like civilized people. Wait. I can make this right, Paul. Keep talking. Okay, good. Henry, you, you want to make with the apologizing? Look, I, uh, I'll stay away from Darcy from now on. It's over. You have my word on that. Your word? What's your fucking word worth, huh? I'll make it up to you. I know a way to get a lot of money right now. You and I both know the only reason Darcy comes up here is she's pissed at you. If you were flush again, everything would be different. Besides, I owe you for what I've done. Well, what do you think? How are you gonna make us all rich, Cook? Gather round and I'll tell you. Here's the deal. I have some other um, businesses on the side. One of them is helping Nelson Latimer spend his dad's money to make himself feel like a gangster. And we're gonna relieve Mr. Latimer of some of his money. Holy shit, Cook, does Malcolm know about this? What do you think? No, of course not. Anyway, that's between him and Nelson. So where was I? Oh yeah, me and Nelson are supposed to be meeting some gentlemen from Good Neighbor to exchange Nelson's cash for their chems. My plan is simple. We take the money and the chems. I don't know. An awful lot of unknowns. Trust me, we can do this, no problem. The meeting's always in the same place. They always bring the same number of guys. They'll never know what hit them. I'm in. Let's do this. What do you say, Paul? Are we good? Good? Hardly. But I don't mind you helping me get rich. All right. Uh, I should probably change out my quest for right now. And we should have time to go and do this, because I do believe that this is, like, fairly close by Diamond City. You read City. that article? Public occurrences? Damn sense could be anywhere. Uh, also, if you're interested to know, the, uh, <laughs> the front gate here, uh, after you open it, during the quest there, it stays open. It, it never closes by itself. I don't think. Anyway. But, if you get a jetpack, you can actually close it. It is still a functioning door that can be closed. Uh, but you have to, like, fly up there. We're going to work out for the best. We'll see. You better not be trying to screw me over again. Jesus, Paul. Why would you think that? I know you and Malcolm have been laughing at me. Here the different raider groups are carving up carpet Paul, like Christmas Why is it such a screw up at everything? What? No, of course not. I thought we were friends. Yeah, so did I. Okay, I deserve Look at the that. City? But you've got yeah, it all, all wrong. This whole thing with Darcy, like I said, it just happened. It wasn't about you, Paul. I don't want to talk about it anymore. You, whatever you want. All right. I don't know if they have any more conversation than that. Nelson's starting to think he doesn't need me. Is he? Well. Not like this is really going to put you on his good side, although... Uh, I'm not entirely sure that Nelson is actually there. It would make sense if he was, but... Oh my god, how far is this? Way further than I thought. Where the... They may have went a different direction. Here we are. The meat is just ahead. Well, there's always four of Morowski's goons. Trish, who's in charge, and then three other guys to unload the boat and wave their guns around. 
You should be able to work your way around these buildings to get a good angle on them. I'll wait for the shooting to start, then join in from here. Remember, we can't afford to let anybody get away. Alright. So yeah, he won't shoot until you shoot. Uh, you also don't have to kill Trish. Where the hell is Cook? We can't sit here much longer. Relax. I'm sure he'll be here anyway. I don't remember if you yeah. can... Hey. Who the Let hell are you? Let me deal with this fool. You better get the fuck out of here if you know what's good for you. Cook sent me. He has a message for you. Cook told you about this? Where the hell is Cook anyway? What is this, Nelson? Are you gonna hand over the money in chems, or do I have to kill you? Are you serious? Kill this asshole! <laughs> <laughs> All right. Better in our hands anyway. Let's get some bullets. Grab the key. That's all the chems. Don't move. Uh, you don't have to kill me. I won't talk. I swear. Give me a reason not to kill you. I don't need a better reason than to shut her up. I'll tell Morosky it was Gunners, okay? You can trust me. And uh, uh, I'll give up Morosky's chem lab. This here, this is nothing compared to what he's got stashed there. Go on. Where do you think these chems come from? We got a lab right here in the Commonwealth. But you'll never find it on your own. Not without my help. Why do I need your help to find this lab? Because first, you don't know where it is. Second, even if you did know where it was, it's heavily protected. Third, even if you can get past the security, you won't be able to get into the lab without my password. But I'll tell you everything you need to know if you promise to let me go. Tell me what you know first. Well, okay. I'm trusting you, right? The lab is in the old Foily fish packing plant on the waterfront in South Boston. What's so secure about that? The place is overrun with feral ghouls, which don't even look twice at my crew, because they're all ghouls like me. My idea, by the way. I assume there's more to it than getting past the ferals. You assume, right? The real security is a system of tripwires that have to be triggered in exactly the right order to open the door to the lab. You never even know the lab was there when the door is closed. So how do I get in without hitting all the tripwires? With a password, which... I can give you. There's a terminal that will bypass the tripwires and open the door to the lab. So, I have your promise, right? If I give you the password, you let me walk? And you promised to not tell Morowski that I had anything to do with this? Yeah, yeah, of course. I already told you. After I leave here, I've never heard of you in my life. The password is Applejack. There! Now you've got everything! And I'm completely screwed forever! I hope you can live with that. Sorry, sir. Oh. I oh. guess we're... So, that's that. I told you it was no problem. The money should still be on Nelson's body. And then there's these chems, which you'll need to sell somehow. But that's your problem now. I'm leaving town, for good. Should make things easier for Paul to have me gone. Plus, there's no plausible way I could explain to Morowski how I wasn't involved in this unless I die here along with everyone else. Just like that? You're leaving town and never coming back? Yeah. You won't be able to blame me for all your problems anymore. Good luck, Cook. 
I hope it works out for you. Don't you worry about me. I've been planning this move for a while. I'll be fine. So, it's just the two of us. 50-50 seems fair to me. Mm. So here's the thing, right? I don't really care, but this one will get me a better response from Piper. That works for me. Great. Then you take the money from Nelson, I'll take the chems, and we'll call it even. Works for me. Good luck. Yeah. Maybe my luck is finally starting to turn. Alright, so now these, as you can see, instead of just says stealing from, it actually lets you see what's in there. Now, it's not <clears throat> just the pile of crates showing that. There's actually ten of each in each of these crates. Like, you, act, there's actually like a fuck ton of cans here. Um, but yeah, we got the password to the cabin and everything, and as you saw, it does gain access to more to Murawski's chem lab. Uh, but I'm not going to worry about that right now. We're going to head back to Diamond City. Because uh, we should be able to get back there by 6. And then we can continue the Confidence Man quest. Uh, but yeah, there's a couple different outcomes. Uh, I'm not entirely sure if you can save Trish there. But I'm not too worried about it. Obviously, otherwise, you know, I would have reloaded or, or whatnot. Um, I, I imagine that you can kill Cook to save her, but it doesn't really make too much of a difference as far as I'm... Oh, really? That Get the latest edition issue. Uh, Okay, hang on. How does... Oh, well, anyway. Yeah, apparently if... Uh, like, we do have a couple interactions that we can do... Uh, or, yeah, some other interactions that we can do. Obviously, with Cook gone, somebody else will have to come and run the store. And uh, I do believe his daughter shows up. I don't know if she runs the place or not, or if she just shows up. But I think she shows up. Latimer there, the kid we killed. Are you sure about this? I am not a normal girl. My dear, you're perfect. I only wish I had realized that sooner. Then by the power invested in me, you won't I pronounce you man issue. and just wife. You wait. <laughs> you help me make a very big decision. Thank you. I think I know what this love is now. Edna. I am so happy. Oh, good for that. Nat. Hey, mister, that interview you did with Piper is really selling. Here's your free copy. Thank you. The latest hairstyle. We'll read that in the next part. It's a little, well, yeah, because there's like, as you saw, there are three parts hey, to it. You're that vault dweller from the paper. Sure enough. All right. Let's see how long we've we been going. Forty-three minutes. Okay. I might uh, record another part right now, but I think we'll actually end it here anyway. Uh, but miscellaneous. Before we do that, I do want to see Adamer Residence Plaza. Is Trish's note. So if you trip the, or if you do the trip wires in that order, because obviously you can kill her without getting the password to bypass these. So if you do that, then obviously one, two, three, four, five, and then it'll open the door for you anyway. But yeah, the uh, the things from the vault here are, as you can see, fairly lengthy, and that's only part one, right? Uh, but yeah, that'll be it for this part. What time is it? It is 5 o'clock. So, yeah. Like I said, I may or may not do another part, record another part right away. But either way, I'll end this part here because there is still quite a bit left to the Confidence Man quest. 
Uh, so thanks everybody for watching and I will see you on Wednesday for more.